I'm Russ Kinsler. I'm the Missouri River System Supervisor based out of Riverdale. And uh, I manage Lake Sakakawea and the Missouri River System in North, in North Dakota. Today we're, is our first day of spawning salmon this year. Uh, that process starts uh, out here, and this is Rodeo Bay on Lake Skakawea, but it starts in the bays close to the dam and along the dam. We take our electrofishing boat out and uh, shock the salmon, which just allows us to catch them alive. We then bring the salmon to the hatchery where we sort them by males and females and spawn the fish that are ready. This year, is a little later than normal. Uh, our average first spawn is October 4th. So this year, what we're thinking is, at the end of May, beginning of June, it, we had that real hot spell that warmed the surface of the lake up, and that set up the thermocline in the lake, and it set it up really hard. I mean, it, it's, it was a very co big contrast between the warm water above it and the cold water below it. And we're thinking that has something to do with the fish are just the salmon are behind schedule a little bit, and it's because that water down deep is just colder than normal um, for this time of year. So we're hoping that the fish are still coming. Uh, they were actually anglers out down rigging for salmon in October, which I've never heard of before this year, and they were doing well. So the salmon are still out there and hopefully they're still coming to spawn. Salmon, when they spawn not in their native environment, when the eggs hatch, the smolts, imprint on where they were spawned and then they returned, most of them returned to where they were spawned at. So here in North Dakota, they're spawned in the hatchery and we stock them out in the two bays closest to the dam, right about the time they're smolting. And so they imprint on the lower end of the lake and thus most of them come back here. There are always some salmon that stray and go to other parts of the lake and, and you see that in the wild too and that's how they spread out as a species. But the vast majority come back to where they were stocked. In the spring of the year when we stock them, we've been fin clipping them and tagging them. So while we're spawning, we're looking for adult fish that are missing that fin clip. And then we, when we see that, we know there's a good chance it's got a, a tag, a little metal tag in its head. So we'll take the head off it so we can use that tag to determine where that fish was stocked, how big it was when it was stocked, and it's most importantly now is its age. What we're also doing is we're taking out the otolith, which is the inner ear bone of, a, of the fish. And we're working with that as an easier method of aging the fish and kind of phasing out of the tagging program and switching to this otolith aging. Not only are we spawning the fish, taking links and weights to see how they're growing and that, we're also now collecting the otolith to age more of the fish. It, the bulk of our salmon from Lake Sakakawea, um, and then we've also collected some salmon in the tail race below Garrison Dam. The salmon come up the stream where the hatchery water is leaving the hatchery and they swim back up that towards the uh, hatchery and we have a trap set up to collect them there. This year we are not using those fish uh, as part of our spawn. Um, South Dakota stocked some salmon from Washington State and we want to be sure that those fish are truly disease free before we start using fish from the Missouri River again. So we're gonna monitor those fish for the next three, four, five years. And if they continue to be disease free, then we will start using them again. Well, it's our first spawn and I would love to say our salmon are looking great, but they are not. Our salmon this year are small. They're just not what they should be. Because of that, each salmon is gonna have less eggs in it or smaller eggs, which will impact uh, their survival in the hatchery, you know, hatching to to stocking survival. So we will probably need to collect a few more females than we would have normally anticipated collecting. Our goal is to collect about a million eggs. Normally that would take about 400, or 400 females, 400 good females. I'm guessing this year we're gonna to have to collect 500 or maybe a few more to reach that goal. But then it is our first spawn and once we get the uh, egg numbers from the hatchery after this first spawn, we'll have a better idea of how many fish it's gonna take. But, the fish are definitely smaller and are you know, a lot lighter than what they historically have been. It, it is concerning. We're thinking the salmon are smaller because our smelt population, which is the primary forage for salmon in the lake, our smelt are smaller than they used to be at a certain age. 
So our salmon are, are swimming around and it just takes more energy to catch the same amount of food. The reason our smelt are smaller is that as the reservoir is aging, it's becoming less productive. When you first flood vegetation, everything, that vegetation turns into food for plankton and then zooplankton and on up the food chain. And, and that includes smelt, which, you know, when they have more food, they're bigger. Salmon eat them, bigger smelt, they get bigger. So what we need is that productivity surge and what we see like here behind me where you see this vegetation that was flooded this summer, that will help with that productivity and, and hopefully getting us some bigger smelt. So when we spawn salmon, we figure about 30% survival from egg to stocking. And where we lose fish in there is just, when you're spawning the salmon, we're catching them with electrofishing we don't always catch them as soon as they become ready to spawn. Some of them might have been swimming around for a few days, some a week. And the longer they swim around, once they're ready, their eggs become less viable. So we have some of that where their egg quality, just from the start, is not as good as it would be on, say, ocean fish that are spawning naturally and, and everything's perfect. Here, this is a very unnatural environment to start with. And so we have just, egg quality issues to start with. Then, especially now with the smaller salmon, when that egg is smaller, it has yes, less of a uh, energy in it. So when that hatches, that young fish, uh, a fry they would call, has a sack fry, has less energy to start growing. So they, there's a higher mortality as soon as they hatch and then throughout their first early stages of life. In general, we lose about 30% from spawn to when we stock them. So we're collecting the fish, we bring the salmon to the hatchery, they help us spawn the fish, and once the eggs are collected and fertilized, the hatchery then takes over and takes those fish, uh, hatches them, raises them up to the size we want, then we will go back in and take the fish from the hatchery and stock them back into the lake. So this is a, it's a partnership that works really good and it's very unique, pretty much to North Dakota. Garrison Dam Natural Fish Hatchery is a federal hatchery and a state working with a federal hatchery is just, it's not common in the United States for that to happen. So it's a, it's a very good partnership. It works great for both of us and it's been successful for 30 years with the salmon program. We don't have any state owned hatcheries in North Dakota. So without the cooperation with the federal hatchery, we currently wouldn't have any way of uh, carrying this program out. Um, salmon don't spawn naturally in North Dakota. We don't have the cold water streams that flow all winter. Uh, they will attempt to spawn on the shoreline, but on Lake Sakakawea, they drop the water in the winter. So those eggs, any eggs that they would spawn would freeze out. So without the hatchery's cooperation, the cooperation between the state and the hatchery, we wouldn't have salmon in a matter of four or five years if we quit spawning.